Right, we're up to part seven of the end of evil. Looks like there will be eight parts in total. Now the two moons of Mars. Yah says, I had revealed in 2010 one of the moons skimmed past the Earth over a, a few weeks period and one could plainly see it. Then on the 19th of July 2010, and we remember this date because we are moving into the home uh, in Sedgwick, Victoria. Yah says, I was watching for it. Yeah, and it passed over the farm. You, you were with Adam, weren't you, unloading the, yeah. the, the um, van of uh, furniture mm. to go into the house? When, uh, it was four of us. Yeah, the, the two guys from the, the van. The sun was setting and the Mars moon was plainly seen, then disappeared in the shadow of the earth at sunset. Our people had seen it several days in a row and finally it bounced out into space and vanished for good. The outer Mars moon had an escape velocity of one metre per second. The inner moon was nudged into a decay orbit and crashed into Mars, starting a three years dust storm. So Yah asks, what is wrong with this image of Phobos eclipsing the sun taken by the Mars rover dated March the 26th, 2019? It should be as big as a grain of sand. But by that time, of course, that uh, particular moon didn't exist anymore. It had been sent towards the Earth to destroy the Earth. And uh, the other, Deimos, had crashed into the surface of the planet and uh, caused that three-year dust storm. Right, so this is supposed to be a tiny, yeah. tiny, tiny moon eclipsing the sun. Yes. <laughs> what does it look like? It looks like... Now, another thing you've got to realise that if this was so, it would go past the surface of the sun only as big as a grain of sand, like a bullet. Yeah. Because the speed it's doing, it's not in relationship to what the moon is, slowly going past that 240 thousand miles out of space this is only a very very if it was real it's very very close to the moon to the surface of mars so therefore it flashes past right well let's take Total a look at it yes so here we have the demos statistics 18.7 feet per second escape velocity and 14,577 miles orbit. I think the uh, the comet that came in was P76, but don't take me a word on that. I, I think it was, and that's what caused uh, this electrical discharge to firstly attract the uh, one moon out of orbit because it's only at that very small rate of uh, escape velocity, about the same as walking pace, and uh, the other one was pushed into the uh, surface of uh, Mars. So Yah says, now this is, <laughs> oh God knows what it's supposed to be, but anyway, Phobos has a diameter of 22.2 kilometres, now there's a there's a clue for you, Yah's rebirth hour and weight, etc, etc, photographed by the Mars rover. It would have been 4.55 times farther away than the width of the USA. So how hard would it be to see an object 22.2 kilometres is 13.8 miles long at that distance? Impossible, says Yah, while Deimos itself is only 12.6 kilometres wide. And yet they have a video of it eclipsing the sun as well. Utter bullshit, says Yah. The comet flyby caused Deimos to fall from orbit and collide with Mars. The three-year sandstorm. NASA sent a rocket to intercept Phobos as it had escaped Mars gravity. They nudged it towards an Earth impact, arriving July 19th, 2010. A seven-year collision course. It failed to hit Mother Earth. Why? Mother Earth prevented it, as it would have destroyed the life, as predicted by Hitler. 
This brings us to why Mother Earth via an angel asked my permission to eliminate the cause of Earth's destruction. My decision about it was finalised on October the 1st, 2019. On this date though, in 2013, we were staying in a suburb next door to another suburb called October the 6th, which was uh, named after the, the day that Egypt won a battle um, against uh, yeah, Israel. Entirely appropriate that we should be staying next door. Anyway, it was about six kilometres from the Giza Plateau uh, in Egypt, which of course is where the altar to the Lord is. Now, yes, we had cameras set up on the balcony of the apartment building. And so, yes, we were overseeing the altar to the Lord several kilometres away. It, I was just saying to you, yeah, it seemed like it was much further because it, the traffic, it took so, uh, a long time to get there, though it was a shortish distance. Now, the colour of Mars changed to yellow with a green atmosphere. It had obviously been hit by another comet or asteroid. Ten days later, so this is now October the 11th, we climbed into the altar through the Grand Gallery, along the passage past the antechamber into the King's Chamber, where Yah says I lay in the King's Coffer. And yes, that was, many of you will remember that famous climb uh, where Yah suffered 10 heart attacks. He'd already had one at the apartment before we left. And yes, I did. I caught it all on video. I was saying, this is just like the road <laughs> to Calvary, just like the cross all over again. And it was Yah's 101st birth date. Mother's birthday. Didn't I say it was Yah's mother's 101st birthday? Well, whatever, I've said it again. Or not. <laughs> oh dear. Now, back to the 26th of September 2019, uh, when the poor heifer was sacrificed upon the Mount of Olives in. Israel, Israel. The inner planets reached 31.68 astronomical units when measuring from the king planet Jupiter, and Yah was 75.7 years of age, found in Romans 15.12. Reading, and again Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles trust. Reading Isaiah 11, 1 again. Christ born of the root of Jesse and then his virtues and kingdom, the fruits of the gospel, the calling of the Gentiles. But there shall come a rod forth of the stock of Jesse and a grass shall grow out of his roots. So slightly different to... The KJV, talking about a grass growing out. Well, what's a grass? There are many blades of grass coming. A huge population. Yes, meaning a huge population. And again, Isaiah 11, 1, the 11th day of January 1944, Yah's rebirth day. Reading Isaiah 11, 10, And in that day the root of Jesse which shall stand up for a sign unto the people, the nations shall seek unto it and his rest shall be glorious. So though he did not get it this trip, <laughs> it was actually Faye who, who left a comment saying, oh, I see Yah actually resting at some point. So <laughs> Just this trip was not it. It was interesting though. May your trip be interesting. And it was all about the seven. Now Yah says all of these abominations have to be fulfilled for it is all time related, so that when Christ comes, the rejection prophecy will be fulfilled. The falling away is the fall of Adam, the offspring, and is not other races. It's all to do with the white race as the world has been developed by them. The Cain offspring parable is like to give the white race the choice to do good or evil, 
all evil is today the Zionist influence. They are of the Ezra myths that created the myth of Abraham, Moses, Egypt, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus. And so it is obvious that the Jews had to be diverted away from reading Isaiah. In the scroll of Isaiah, the translators made certain the name Moses was included, albeit two verses only. Isaiah 63, 11 and 12, as it is vital to continue with the Moses myth, which was created in Babylon 458 BC. And we see the same in Daniel 9, 11 and 9, 13. Daniel, who was in Babylon from four, rather 586 BC, which was 128 years before Ezra. Isaiah lived 742 to 701 BC, or from 742 BC, a further 284 years until Ezra. Scholars working for the Cain group today have the internet, and then on the internet they have Daniel at 165 years BC, and Isaiah being their three authors. It's an endless attack on truth. And I was reading today on <laughs> amongst their writings now on the internet that the destruction of the temple they say took place in I think 428 BC and not 586 <laughs> as we know by Nebuchadnezzar. Oh dear. Endless. It is endless. Yah says, however, the trap for them is all to do with the Strong's Concordance, published in 1890. Now, the Concordance arranged the King James 1611 words in alphabetical order. Again, 8,674 in the Old Testament, 5,624 in the New Testament. When we have Ezra nine times, you mean the name Ezra? is listed nine times. We have the answer. The words of the Bible numbered are divine. 8,674 words as days is 23.74861 years. This number in the Greek concordance is door. From Revelation 4, 1, that the heaven was opened, that is, that heavenly things were unlocked, and that behold, rather, and that a voice as of a trumpet sounded in heaven. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, saying, Come up hither, and I will show these things which must be done hereafter. And that reminds me of all the information given to me in my looking for Yah. It took me nine years to find him upon the earth, which is what I expected. But 414 opens the door to the doctor's office. And this is Revelation 4 verses 1 through to 4. And the doctor was Yah, of course. He was called Doctor. Mm by many that knew him, and once I found him, March the 30th, 2008, his telephone number was 0414. Australian mobile number always begins with 04, but his was 0414, and he was called the doctor. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> now, the 861 of uh, the 23.74861 is sincerity, unending existence, immortality, incorruptibility, genuineness. That is Yah. Jesus was one day old on Julian Day number 1720861. John 20.22 reads, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. And I remember Yah doing that in a telephone conversation from Barrel, talking to him in Melbourne. And uh, yes, he did exactly that after the revelation that 
I was Martha. <laughs> he breathed upon me to receive the Holy Ghost. Now, 8674 as years is 3168, Lord Jesus Christ in Greek, Gematria, 112 days. Right, Lord 800, 888, Jesus 1480, Christ, total 3168. Now, the altar to the Lord, the Great Pyramid in Egypt, is 5813, pyramid inches high. The king's coffer is between two distances to each wall. 58.13 pyramid inches. We go to the South Pole and measure northward 5813 and come to a line of latitude that is 3168 Lord Jesus Christ, zero kilometres around the earth. On that line is a point where, rather sorry, <laughs> yeah, I have just answered the door, we've got our Four nights dinner delivered. Now, hello, fresh box. On that line is a point where a line from the pole intersects in the sea that ends at 105 Rothschild Avenue in Rosebury, Sydney, 3875 miles from the South Pole. This point where it crosses the 31680 kilometre line around the Earth is 537 kilometres from my home on that latitude, which is Nell Street, Greensboro. This house sits on a city block that has eight sides and a perimeter of 888 metres. The altar to the Lord has eight sides. Each face, that's the four faces, slightly concaved to make up eight. This shows the street layout has a perimeter of 888 metres. Again, sits on the latitude 5813 kilometres from the South Pole, and that latitude is 31680 kilometres around the Earth. Yah says, what I am demonstrating is the reason men who lay out streets, as in Rothschild Avenue or Nell Street, or here, North Shore Avenue in Tugum, the house numbers or house lot numbers are all controlled by the Creator, which created all things via Jesus. The 105 from the Rebirth home location, 105 Rothschild Avenue, is Eagle, also Angel. The 4, Unit 4 of 150 Nell Street is Appointed Time. That's the 4150. And Lucifer in Isaiah 14, 12 and 13. Quoting, I will sit upon the mount and we see the Noahide laws were announced and a red heifer sacrificed on the Mount of Olives on September the 26th, 2019. So here are those locations as mentioned. 105 Rothschild Avenue on the left there. 3875 miles to the South Pole. 3875 in the Greek concordance is Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost. And the red line intersecting with the black line that is 31680 kilometres around the Earth. That is the latitude of the home on Nell Street. And that black line from the intersection point is 537 kilometres to that home on Nell Street. And that home sits 5813 kilometres, which is the height in pyramid inches of the Altar to the Lord with the capstone in place, 5813 kilometres to the South Pole. And here is a, a diagram. On the right, you have the end of the Grand Gallery, which is called the Great Step. And yes, you have to crawl on your hands and knees that short distance to stand up within the antechamber, which is 116.26 pyramid inches wide. And then to get into the King's Chamber, again, down on your hands and knees, knees and call, crawl a greater distance to arrive inside the king's chamber and uh, each wall of the king's chamber is 58.13 pyramid inches from the end of uh, each side of the coffer. The distance 537 pyramid inches and yes Yah was 1162.6 weeks old when he married on April 23rd 1966 
And uh, Rhiannon was 11.626 years younger than Tracy Lee, born May the 4th, 1968. Rhiannon born December 20th, 1979. And Yah's third wife, Michelle, who is Mary Magdalene, she was 1162.6 days younger than Yah. So it's all about the key of the house of David. That's it and uh, how these genetic links surround Yah and are recorded within the dimensions of the Great Pyramid. Doesn't matter where we go on the planet, when we measure from these places that we go to visit, um, call into, it is something remarkable revealed by the measures. Now at the end of Rothschild Avenue is Harcourt Parade. And then in a small town in the state of Victoria is Eagle Road, which is where we stayed. I stayed in particular for nine months. Yeah, I would come out and we would do the work from there every week. But from South Eagle Road, Harcourt, back to 105 Rothschild Avenue and back to North Eagle Road, Harcourt, Victoria. So we're talking about, you know, another state. It measures 888 miles. Now, Yah says, uh, why was I, as Jesus, so confident that I relentlessly condemned the Pharisee to the point they forced Pilate to crucify me? The reason is the timing. Got to die on April 3rd, 33 AD, and then be conceived by the same Holy Ghost that left from the cross, April the 6th, 1943 to be conceived in the most royal woman alive, my mother Daphne Go Lightly. Hyphen Marshall, her married name was Marshall. The Pharisee were as stupid as are the scholars today. The problem then and today, be it Judaism, Christianity or Muslim, or rather Islam. Left alone, the average atheist can see the conspiracy and deception to hide the miracles. Obviously, there has always been a divine force causing men to do spontaneously or to lay out satanic Freemason cities, suburbs, street and numbers that I have had them do as all things in creation were carried out by myself as Jesus. I am Christ, that is, Saviour and God in the flesh. It's the all things prophecy from John 1, 3. Reading all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Again, these are the footnotes. The Son of God declareth that same his everlasting Godhead, both by the creating of all things and also by the preserving of them and especially by the excellent gifts of reason and understanding, wherewith he that beautified man above all other creatures. John 1, 3, that is, as the Father did work, so did the Son work with him, for he was fellow worker with him, the Father and I are one. It was actually, uh, and this is me speaking, it was actually the Father within Yah that was doing the work. This is why he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, the Father and I are one. One is not independent of the other, but what we have are, are um, three periods of time, if you like. Yah in the heavenly realm as the Lord before he comes to the earth, known as the Son, Jesus, and then back again, this time as the Christ. So you've got Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Holy Ghost, who is the Father, all grown up past his age as Jesus this time into the wisdom, knowledge and stature of just who he is. And then the footnotes continue of all those things which were made, nothing was made without him. Yah says, if we look at the Aegean Sea, the temples built by the Greeks are on prominent high places and form the Maltese cross. Scholars have discovered the Knights Templars built buildings in France and together with natural formations, there is a pentagram. They had no idea it was so until modern times when maps revealed it. 
Then the speculation, how did they know? Well, they didn't. They built on the highest hill, caused by divine prompting. However, modern researchers say it is the orbit of Venus, and it, the female planet, is Mary Magdalene, and the Templars were leaving a message. Mary was married to Jesus, and their offspring are the Monrovian kings, therefore are the Priory of Zion. Once astronomers began plotting the orbit of Venus and the Earth, a pentagram was formed by the ratio of 8 and 5, the orbits of Earth and Venus. Hello, Yah says these idiots invent solutions, ignoring the obvious. Yah continues, then as geography or astrological or astronomy knowledge increased, the Knights Templars, about as stupid a group as ever existed, and we know we stayed with one while in Papua New Guinea, we were staying in his house. A Knights Templar, some highfalutin dude, uh, contacting people all around the globe and organising this, that and the other. And I explained, this is this is when Yar actually contracted malaria and uh, he was sweating it out on, on, on the bed and the calcium hypochlorite knocked it out once I got him back to Australia. But uh, I was there for days explaining all things to, to both of them, the Italian couple. Well, of course, as always, the wife got it immediately. But... Um, and the husband, who was the Knights Templar, did not want to know. And she just said, you know, they are not interested in Jesus. It's all about money. So, then as <laughs> Yah says, the Knights Templars, about as stupid a group that ever existed, built structures on high rocky areas so they could see their enemies. Not realising their natural formations were created for this very important sign of the Creator at work only to discover the Holy Grail and run away stupidity thinking the Templars had secret knowledge rather than the obvious, the Fibonacci numbers throughout all creation. 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 2, 3 equals 5, 3 plus 5 equals 8, 5 plus 8 equals 13 and so on. If you add 8 to 13 you get 21 and then if you add <laughs> 21 to 13, you get 34, etc. It goes on to infinity. So here is the um, cycles. There are five synodic cycles, eight years between two transits. The two alignments that create the 2004 and 2012 transits lie on Venus's south node. So yeah, the, these are the transits of Venus in 2004, which Yah witnessed from um, Mandura in uh, outside of Perth, Western Australia, and 2012, just now seven years ago. So we're coming up for an eighth, another one rather, in uh, 2020. And here are these uh, chateaus that have been erected on the highest places so they can see their enemies coming. And uh, the names of them, we've got Blanche Fort, René, Chateau de Montferrand, La Soleine, and Serre de Lozette. And then the Chateau de Templiers, Bezu Castle. So, right. So now we have fire and the solar system. Yah says the dimensions of the earth and moon are in fire relationship, forming a triangle based on 1.618. Or the di diameter of Saturn is very close to a fire relationship with the diameter of its rings, as illustrated by the green lines. The inner ring division is in a relationship that is very close to phi, with the diameter of the rings outside the sphere of the planet, as illustrated by the blue lines. So this will be on another slide. The Cassini division in the rings of Saturn falls at the golden section of the width of the lighter outside section of the rings. So at the moment, we've got the fire relationship between the Earth and the Moon. And uh, Saturn's rings and the fire relationship, everything 
inner outer relationship with five 1.618 interestingly although not surprisingly considering uh, my relationship to ya is that my children from the oldest uh, girl to adam the youngest is point rather it's not point it is 618 years 6.18 years so there's your fibonacci number uh, uh, of um, 618 reflected in in the birthdays of my children and each one of them were born at 35 minutes past the hour and uh, yes 35 meaning royal king etc let's see Ali was the first born and she was born at 8 35 a.m the next daughter was Aaron and she was born at 3.35 p.m. And then the next daughter was Abby, all A's. <laughs> she was born at uh, 5.35 a.m. And then Adam, the last and the only son, born at 2.35 p.m. And then my grandson, Lincoln born in 2014 was uh, 4 35 p.m and it was a monday afternoon yeah it says in addition venus orbits the sun in 224.695 days while earth orbits the sun in 365.2424 days creating a re ratio of 8 divided by 13 which are both Fibonacci numbers thus five conjunctions of Earth and Venus occur every eight orbits of the Earth around the Sun so in other words every every eight years and every 13 orbits of Venus Mercury on the other hand orbits the Sun in 87.968 Earth days creating a conjunction with the Earth every 115.88 days 115 is go lightly thus there are 365.24 divided by 115.88 conjunctions in a year or 22 conjunctions in seven years and the hebrew alphabet of 22 letters but not only that for those of you old enough i remember in uh, primary school learning about pi was 22 divided by 7. Now we have calculators and it's 3.14159 and goes on and on and on. However, the simple way to get there was 22 divided by 7. So reading John 5.20 from the Geneva End Time Prophecy. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things, whatsoever he himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye should marvel. So the reality is that Jesus, yes, he did great works, healing people and that kind of thing. But that was for that day. Can you imagine him coming along talking about this in that day when they didn't, no computers, flat out having sticks with markings on them to count anything, or stones to throw at a stoning for example so what's the way to break through is to heal people of their diseases huh well guess what you can do that today yourself with the right knowledge keeping your ph level up knowing how to kill cancer and all the rest of it people can heal themselves we do all of the time so that those are not the miracles necessary for today what are the miracles necessary for today is everything that yah has been demonstrating to you like finding a needle within haystacks each one of these threads that reveal him through the measure of time revolving around his rebirth day and hour the 11th of january 1944 at 2 a.m and location which is space rebirth home 105 rothschild avenue sydney australia or Rebirth Hospital, just two miles away, into St. Margaret's, Darlinghurst, Sydney. These are the miracles of today. 
And as you know, those of you who have been following long enough, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them. So the concordance allows us to measure time, distance, or gematria. The first time in history a pope, that is Benedict XVI, recognises Christ is back. Hello. He was so overjoyed. He was so excited. He became a young man again within himself. Presents the good news to the Antichrist. And because Benedict is so pure in heart, he, he thought Francis would be as delighted as he was. Hello. Francis rejects the truth out of hand. And then later threatens myself, both of us, if we go to Rome, we'll be arrested. Uh, and then the thugs working for him. Well, you see what Francis has up his sleeves. So in, in our conversation, this is Yah with Benedict, he had no idea of prophecy or what part the King James 1611 Bible had to do with it. Or there was such a thing as the James Strong's Concordance. And Yah, you know, didn't mention it. He reckoned, because to him, what the thing that, Pope Benedict worshipped always was the Shroud of Turin as the image of God, the image of Jesus Christ, the image of God. He, he knew it to be authentic and he worshipped it as, as the burial cloth of God, which indeed it is. And so he recognised my face as Jesus on the Shroud of Turin. This is how the pure in heart shall see God. Not as a floaty ghost existence out there in the ether, are you shown a glimpse of, of, of God? No, it's on the earth where the kingdom comes to. And the pure in heart, like Pope Benedict XVI, look at the Shroud of Turin and go, oh my God, it's him. As he's presented with a photograph side by side with the Shroud of Turin and he, he gets what I would call the Holy Ghost shivers with that, through himself. He has a physical reaction to that and he describes it in the letter he wrote for the world, in Christum Creda, the apostolic letter. And he just says simply, what else can it be? It is him. It was the defining moment of his entire life. And then, of course, he comes up against the Antichrist, thinking Bergoglio would be just as thrilled as he was. No, because Bergoglio, as the Antichrist, and anybody who rejects Yah is not, pure in heart. To be pure in heart, there can be no self-agenda, no, no teaching that preoccupies your mind or your heart. It has to be pure, ready for the truth, whatever that means, and to lay down everything you think you know. And I'm speaking to Christians it is still you that reject. You come in and leave the comments and you know, coming out with the well-worn scriptures where you have been totally deceived. Not investing the time. You have no will to invest your time in tracing out Yah's truth that he has been revealing himself to the world now for close to 30 years. And that is a warning. It is a very dangerous place for your soul to be in. Because today as the Holy Ghost, what stands, and you can ask a number of people who have done this, either wittingly or unwittingly, is that they speak against Yahweh, Brian, Leonard, Go lightly, Marshall, who is the Holy Ghost, they speak against him and Yah doesn't even have to know about it. And they become in danger of committing the unpardonable sin from which there is no return and has nothing to do with Yah. But you have angels watching over you. They know what you think. They know what you speak in private and they know if you have crossed that line and then your life will be plunged into a darkness that is really, well, unless, unless you are forgiven of your unwitting blasphemy, 
then there is no way back. As I said, there are a, a few who have unwittingly fall into that place and they can describe what it's like. It is hell, hell on earth. Their lives just fall apart. They have no peace of mind. They lo lose the plot mentally, physically, every which way but loose. Now, Yah says, as the earth is created, the placing of volcanoes on mountains, much like the map with streets. <laughs> so the mountains ready to slide into the Atlantic. And then with modern latitude and longitudes and Magellan GPS software, it reveals Revelation 16:18. Hello, the Fibonacci, as it is the link being the Fibonacci number. Let's read it. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, even so mighty an earthquake. Now we experienced those thunderings and lightnings the night of our return from our trip, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Or it was either the same night or the, the following true. night. And the voices being heard were ours, as we were talking about. It's October the 12th. Uh, well, that was, um, today's the 14th, that was only two days ago. So, no, it was it's, it was earlier than that. But anyway. October was, the 11th. was Friday. That's my mother's birthday. Your mother's birthday, yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Now the footnotes here from the Geneva. Now is declared the execution, as said in verse 2.7, and the things that shall last come to pass in heaven and in earth before the overthrow of the beast of Babylon. So that's, that's all to happen now, both generally, verse 18, and particularly in the cursed city, that's Jerusalem, and such as have any familiarity therewith in the last three verses. Woe unto those who are supporting Israel today. Mm. Woe. And that is most of the churches throughout the United States today completely deluded. Revelation 2, 7, Let him that hath an ear hear what the Spirit is saying, or saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Well, the tree of life is Yah, and it's his teachings. And where we live is the paradise of God, here in Tugum, at the moment. It will expand, become greater. Now, uh, the footnotes 2.7, the conclusion containing a commandment of attention and a promise of everlasting life shadowed out in a figure of which that is in paradise after the manner of the Hebrew phrase, thus Christ speaketh as the mediator. It's all about Yah today and where he is. And the name of Tugum is an Aboriginal name and it means place of rest. It is, it's a beautiful place. Though the work has continued here solidly, of course, but it is a place of rest. We look forward to coming back here after every excursion out. Two, nine, for out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree pleasant to the sight and good for meat. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. And then this continues with the, the footnotes. Um, now, yeah, reading down to what Yah says, Genesis has been tampered with, but has some key points. The priesthood in Babylon had to keep. They made the descendants of Cain sons of God with angelic association that took the daughters of men for wives, producing giants, Cain of the devil, while the daughters of men changed from the daughters of God. Cain, non-human, mixed with human women. Now, the Geneva Bible was available with footnotes published in 1599, but the Freemason push was a translation that they could manipulate and have no footnotes. Edward de Vere and King James, Edward de Vere was William Shakespeare and King James 
were totally aware what the Freemasons were doing and why. So now measuring. That's what God does. He measures his creation from the altar to the Lord. That's the Great Pyramid at Giza to Capernaum, where the first miracle took place of turning the water into wine. Just happens to be 286.1 nautical miles. So here is the displacement factor, the Lamb of God reflected in its measure from the first miracle to the altar. And how do we arrive at the 286.1? Bear with me, those who already know, but for, for new people. The base of the altar, this is the Great Pyramid, was laid out on a solar year times 100. So 100 solar years. So its measure is 36,524.24 pyramid inches around the four sides. Then you've got the alabaster stones, totaling 144 thousand of the alabaster stones were placed inwards on a perimeter less 286.1 pyramid inches so the outer perimeter 36524.24 less 286.1 it, it, it's another simple sum arithmetic but it's telling a story because in the Greek concordance, 286 is lamb and one is alpha being God. So we've got the lamb of God. In the Hebrew concordance, 2861 is espousal male. Now get a load of this. To marry, so you've got the, the pyramid in its fullness, 36524.24 pyramid inches less, the 286.1 equals 36238.14. Point one four, and in the Hebrew concordance, three six two three is a spouse or female. So it's telling the story. It's the Bible in stone. It is the time capsule of the end times. So it's telling you that the male espousal to marry the female, the bridehood, plural. Alpha God. What is an alpha male? He's the one and only alpha male. In other words, Yah's soul is the only male soul on the planet. All souls, whether you be male or female in the flesh, is a female soul. That is how that, that males, men, can marry the Christ in the end time. And we're talking about a spiritual marriage where the covering of the alpha male who is God himself his Holy Ghost garment, represented by the 144,000 white alabaster stones, becomes your covering over your flesh body when you recognize him, take on his teachings as the truth, and marry him in the spirit. And that's the revelation, 144,000 to marry Christ. It was represented by the white alabaster stones that were clearly visible from Jerusalem in 33 AD. It was later, hundreds of years later, that they were all stripped off, smashed to pieces, and, and now they're in thousands, tens of thousands of buildings throughout Cairo. Right. They were raided. Talk about raiders of the lost ark. How about raiders of the only ark, being the, the altar to the Lord, and they stripped off all the stones. Because they're thieves and robbers. Well, Dead Sea Scrolls is the Ark of Noah, is the Great Pyramid. Yes, that's right. As covered in our previous upload. They can see it because of the moon reflecting on the pure white alabaster. Yes, that would be glorious. Mm. Absolutely. It was a full moon last night. And how, how illuminated. Yeah, waking up at three in the morning because the, the moon is right outside our window and it's almost like daylight well I tend to recover it would do you missing yes so here is the distance 286.1 nautical miles using Magellan GPS and the uh, outer line the inner line being the uh, original perimeter less the 286.1 
pyramid inches. So you've got male, espousal and bridehood. The bride and groom. Now, switching over to volcanoes, the distance from Cape and I'm to Stromboli volcano off the coast of Sicily is 1944.1 kilometers. And here, Yar's rebirth day, January, the first month of the year in 1944. From Stromboli volcano to the North Pole is 3424 nautical miles in the Hebrew concordance to sit down as judge in ambush in quiet. By implication to marry, make to abide abiding, marrying, bring again to place, remain, return. In the Greek concordance 3427, a form of 1698, to me, I, me, mine. <laughs> 698 is Marshall. Yes, 698 is, uh, isn't it? How many times the word, word is found mm -hmm. in the, uh, yeah. So Yara is saying, now Mother Earth is clearly a creation and has consciousness. I have revealed how to measure your mother and I have been asked my permission to allow her to carry out steps to save the planet from those who would destroy her, as mentioned in Revelation 11, 18. Reading. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. So Yah says, what would suddenly cause the ten nations, this is of Europe, to be angry? The Vatican, knowing Christ is back. A worldwide blackout to the point of causing all media told to stop the good news that Christ is back, which is the case. So time has run out. Unless the Mother Earth was stopped, the massive quake predicted would come to pass. The Vatican has refused to announce Christ was back. This is the Vatican under Francis. Then the massive destruction by quakes and eruptions of volcanoes began far more powerful than ever was from the beginning of the earth. So reading Matthew 24, 22, And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Yah says it is clear time has run out. He says, I have been battling the beast for 70 years, and even though my proof is absolute, yet the spirit of evil hovering over the white race cannot be overcome. Therefore prophecy stands. I have no option. My answer after considering the terror for the innocent it will cause. Time has to be shortened, otherwise all will be killed. And giving due consideration to the 2,500 plus years of suffering, I must accept prophecy cannot be altered. Reluctantly, it is obvious. And so I give my permission to my mother to go ahead. And we'll finish this one so that you can go to End of Evil Part 8.